Hello, everybody. Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Amaral. And thank you for watching Ask the Tech Coach, the podcast dedicated to you, the instructional technology coach. We are here each and every week dedicating this show to helping you be the best tech coach that you can be. Welcome to episode number 13. Today we're going to be talking about how you can create a self-assessment for every staff member in your school district. Nick, what are some of the things that we're going to be learning about today? Yeah, I think uh, we're going to look at and talk about uh, what surveys look like, um, how to kind of go about creating them, uh, what should they do, what do you do with the information that you pull from them, um, and just, uh, you know, what do you do if no one fills it out, right? Like, what, what can you do with that? How do you manage that and how do you deal with that issue? That is certainly the issue on hand today. What happens if you do all of this work and... Nothing happens. But before we get into that, Nick, we've been doing this now for three episodes. Last week, we did a fantastic episode on how to get organized in multiple buildings. And we got a lot of feedback from that because so many of our tech coaches work in more than one building. Or maybe they're the middle school tech coach and there's two middle schools, right? Something something silly like that. So we had a couple questions come on in here. Maybe we can kind of volley these things back and forth. Number one, how do you work in multiple buildings and not go crazy? You've got multiple buildings, right? Yeah. So I'm in two high schools, right? So I think for me, it's a matter of you know, building a hub that teachers can go to. That was a big piece for me. Right. Knowing that they can go there and pull any information that they want at any time. Um, and it helps me alleviate not having me in one building uh, when I'm in another, right? So it's a place where they can go and get resources and things like that. Watch video clips if I created some flip videos and trainings and whatnot. So that's been big. It, and it all goes back to that have that website, right? And I'm glad Absolutely. you used that word, that digital hub. That was actually the topic of our first episode together, Nick, which was Ask the Tech Coach episode number 11. All of that stuff is over on our archives over at askthetechcoach.com. Nick, here's our second question here. How do you work with contrasting administrators? Maybe you're in a single building where different... Uh, assistant principals are asking different things of you, or maybe you're in multiple buildings where one philosophy is completely different than another philosophy, and you're going into one building with everything going on full blast, and then you go to this other place, and it's like, well, we don't know what technology is, and how do you handle those? You know, I th and that happens a lot, and I think a lot of that is part of the role that we're in, right? I, I think we hope that administration and school leadership seek us out to ask us some of the questions that, um, or guide them in the directions that they want. I think that's uh, one of those, you know, the, the niches of this role, right, that I think gets lost is that ability to sort of guide and be the innovative mind and whatnot. So it happens a lot. Um, one of the great things in my district that, that we've done is is having these cabinet meetings these joint cabinet meetings or just administrative top level meetings where we can be able to kind of all get on a similar page but you still get those who want to try different things so i think it's just a matter of finding what their need is what their want is and i think a lot of times it happens at the building level especially with like building principles because each one wants to tailor it in an organic way to their staff their building their community so just finding a way to put the differences aside in order to best meet, you know, the whole group. Um, and I think that's just something that we got to get accustomed to. So when you're doing this and you've got, let's, let's say you've got two principles, right? Yep. I found it is not a good idea to go to principal B and say, well, this is what I'm doing with principal A and what he wants me to do. And, 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 and right. Because definitely that sometimes doesn't both, work, right? right. I usually find let those two administrators talk to each other and say, Hey, Nick is doing this in my building. And then let the conversations organically happen there. Right. But if you walk in and say, well, I'm doing this over here. Why am I not? Or even sometimes better, sometimes worse. Maybe you say, look, I've done this over here. Could we think about Nick, what, what, how do you handle yeah. those conversations? No, they, they sometimes I, work, but they're mostly awkward. Yeah, they become awkward. And I think, like you said, I, it's not a matter of going in and talking up what you've done at one building versus the other. Um, but maybe it's the idea of, 
you know, here's an idea, here's something we've tried, here's something we could try. What is it that you're looking for and see if there's a way that you can kind of merge it into something you've done in another building. You know, one thing we've done, I will, I will say is, um, one building started ahead of the other and uh, the media specialist uh, really was the front of this, but together um, started a genius bar for tech students, right? Um, but that was at one building and not the other. So now that talk is coming up. Well, it happened there and not here. How do we bring that to ours? It's a different culture, like you said. You got to make it organic to the to the different buildings. So we're not going to go about it the same way, right? Like this principal and I, we're going to sit down. We have to sit down with a different media specialist, and we're going to have to now organically build it for our community in the separate building. All right, so here's the third question here. And again, it, guys, if you're listening to these shows out here and you have questions, please reach out to us. You can find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. And of course, you can go to our website, askthetechcoach.com. We've, we've got a lot of ways that you can communicate with us through contact forms, emails, all those different things. But askthetechcoach.com, uh, we've been constantly working on um, updating that website as we progress here. Last question here from last week. How do you put yourself in more than one place at a time, but but not feel like you're constantly missing things, right? We call this the out of sight, out of mind system, right? It's okay to have a website, but if you're not in the building, do you still exist? Yeah, you know, I got a quick and easy one, Jeff, and I think there's so many that you and I can bounce back and forth, so I don't know if we just wanna kind of like rapid fire a few different ideas, but I'll say one of my big ones was Remind, using that as a quick way on my phone to say, here's what building I'm in, here's what building I'm not, but if you need me, here's a quick tip, here's how you can reach me. It's just a quick kind of back and forth uh, app that I like, and I remember using it with students when I was in the classroom. Such great topics. Again, we would like to hear from you as we go through our system here. Now, speaking of things that we went through together, Nick, last week you invited me to an ed camp that you were running. Yeah, right. And uh, it turned out really well. So thank you for helping out and running some sessions. And uh, I know my teachers uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely cleaning up their Google selves. So that was a big piece. And uh, what kind of things did you pick up there that you might want to bring with you throughout the school year? So uh, the idea of continuing with the choice, um, having a lot of choices throughout the year, you know, that's a big piece with teachers. Um, definitely the turnout was great this uh, this year, even more. And I'm hoping that next year I can I can even bring it to the next level, um, including a lot of wellness things. I think that's going to be one piece that has always been difficult uh, to try to do on the PD front. But in order to offer a lot of um needs to meet the, the wellness needs of our staff. I think that's something that I'm that's going to be a challenge throughout the year for me. I, I agree. I had such a great time meeting people. I also love the fact that you opened this up, not just for teachers, but for all staff members. I, I had the opportunity to do one of my favorite presentations, Stop, Drop, and Get Organized. And it's really all about creating ways to keep yourself organized in your drive, in your YouTube, in your Gmail. And I love that work because it's one of those, we can fly in an hour through everything, or I've done that where we literally just spend 45 minutes on what is a Gmail label. Yeah, and it's big, I'll tell you, because that was a big way for me to promote it was, you know, the administrative assistants and the secretaries, you know, a lot of schools, don't they don't get the PD, they don't get any PD. So and with us, you know, we do make it a point to try to get them some PD. And, and that was something I was like, all right, they're a group I want to I want to pinpoint and I want to hit and you helped me out with that. So that's awesome. So, Nick, let's get to our topic of the day, right? How to assess your staff members' technology skills, right? And that is the topic of this week's conversation. Each week on our show, we have a conversation for you. Generally, we pin it to the top of our Twitter feed over at Ask the Tech Coach on Twitter. This week's session is how are you guys out there assessing the skills of your students' and teachers. It is the beginning of the school year. Many of us are trying to figure out where our new teachers are, where the veteran teachers are. Perhaps we're trying to figure out what we can do. Today, we're going to be talking about different things that we can give them, email them, survey them with, but also we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do as you are, you know, cold walking up to somebody. Like, how do I approach Nick and really, really quickly figure out where he is on that spectrum, right? So Nick, do you have any thoughts and opinions on self-assessments? Should we be doing self-assessments as a group, as a district, as a yeah. tech coach? Uh, I definitely think we should. You know, I think even for us as tech coaches, you know, if there's a quick way for you to gauge 
um, at the end of a workshop, how you did. It's just another way for you to reflect, co to go back and to tweak, you know, the same way we've done it with our students in the classroom. Um, how did that lesson go? Did they pull away what they should have? Were they able to, to create something with what they learned? If we can ask ourselves some of those questions and see if it was enjoyable, you know, I, I mean, that's a, that's a question we need to ask. Did you enjoy your time in my session for the hour that you took place trying to learn X, Y, and Z or to create this? If they can answer some of those some of those questions and, and you can pull some great data away and being able to assess yourself and then tweak as you go along you know i certainly think having these self-assessments is there the problem that we always run into at the beginning of the year is if they're not part of the culture they're hard to pull data from right if you've got 200 teachers and you just email cold and say hey guys would you mind trying this thing I, I, I don't see you're going to get a huge amount of data, right? I mean, either people are busy, they forget about it. It's not as important as, say, doing the uh, bloodborne pathogens test that we all like doing. <laughs> so let's take a look here from all the different examples. If we're creating a survey, and I'm going to use that word lightly, that could be anything. That does not mean Google Form, right? Absolutely. If you're creating a, a tangible thing that says, show me what you know. Yep. Right? What could what could that look like you know there's so many i'll tell you one of my you know other than right let's step aside from google forms for a second or survey monkey i think there's so many things out there one of my favorites for just quick assessment even at the beginning of every workshop has been like a poll everywhere right just a simple one question and that one question could be a drag and drop a, some type of image manipulative whatever it is that you want to do but i always like asking you know how can you self-assess yourself and where would you put yourself on this graph or something like that? And then they have to, you know, move their info, their cursor around and drop. And that's great because then I can take a screenshot. I can save that to my drive, whatever I want to do. Um, but that's been a great piece for me. And it's been outside of, like you're saying, the lengthier survey monkeys or, or Google forms and things like that. Jeff, how about you? What's something that you like to use? Well, I, I completely agree. It's easy for us, right? Sometimes I find these surveys are, are designed for us, and sometimes these surveys are designed for them. I'm actually a big believer that sometimes what I'm testing somebody on, I'm really not testing them on that. So what we're going to do with this podcast episode is we're going to give you guys our free technology integration self-assessment all you have to do is go over to attack uh, attack ask the tech coach.com this is episode number 13 we are creating a google drawing template now you might be thinking what does google drawings have to do with a survey we have a simple survey for you now before I go any further, I'm going to say this is not an original idea. Um, a few years ago, I was I was hunting and pecking for this type of topic, and I found a template that literally is a Google drawing in four different quadrants. And I, honestly, I don't even know who this is. So if you're out there listening or if you know where this, this concept originated, please let them know that we totally are ripping them off, but we're doing so with giving them credit for. So basically, on one, on, on one axis, the horizontal axis, Access, it says what I need to learn and what I have learned. And then on the vertical access, it says I rarely use or I often use, right? And then the idea here is that you can take the icon which we're providing for you. We're providing Microsoft icons, Google icons, EdTech icons. And then the person puts the icon in a random part of the um, Google drawing with the idea that if they're in, you know, maybe the top right quadrant, that's I've learned how to do this and I often use it. Or I've learned how to do this, but I rarely use it. And what I mean by sometimes I'm teaching skills that they don't know I'm teaching. Yes, the data is important because I'm going to look at Nick's page and he's going to say, well, Gmail, I know about it, but I rarely use it, right? But really what I'm doing with this is I'm looking to see if they know how to use Google's drawings. Because if they know how to use Google drawings, that generally means they know how to use a mouse, drag, drop, copy, paste. And if they know how to use Google drawings, then I know that they have a fighting chance to use Google Slides. And if they can use Google Slides, then I can start with them on different things, right? But if I get somebody to look at this and their first reaction is, I don't know what to do, then forget everything else. I've already assessed your technology skills. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have another trick, and that's when I'm working with somebody. Let's say Nick and I are talking to each other, and Nick says, hey, can you help me with something, right? My 
usually the last question I say is, hey, Nick, can you send me a calendar invite so I can come out to you? Now, Nick might be asking me about everything else under the sun, but right there I'm asking Nick, Nick, can you give me a calendar invite? I'm actually asking Nick, do you know how to use Google Calendar? And when Nick says, you know, I don't know how to do that, great, I'll show you that the next time I come out. And now we're actually having a conversation where somebody has said, oh, I know I need help, or oh, I know I don't know how to do this. And that's... A, 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 an easy way for me to, con, you know, to engage the conversation about all those things. And yes, suddenly we're talking about calendar invites, which then leads back into their original question. So again, sometimes an assessment or a survey doesn't necessarily have to be a Google form. Absolutely. And I like that, you know, and, and I think we've touched on that once before on one of the others, when we talk about how you're inadvertently leaning them, guiding them in a direction, right? You're doing so uh, in, in a very nonchalant way. So I, it, I recall teachers being interested in gamification and blended learning and things like that and designing an online self-paced gamified module. Well, they're learning through the gamified module what it is to design a gamified unit, right? So they're, they don't know that that's happening, but what are we doing? We're breaching conversation after that, which is a great piece because now they're like, wait, how did you do? And How'd you get it to look? And can you sit with me to then, des des you know, design and develop a module or something for my students that looks the way you did? So what you're doing is you're breaching that conversation in, in an inadvertent way, which is which is a great technique. You know, Nick, I love that you're looking to use gamification in your class. Could you do me a favor? Could you open up a Google Doc and share it with me and then just send me three or four yeah. questions a and then you just wait? Right. right. Or my yep. favorite for gamification is, you know, usually we do these on a spreadsheet. I'll show you how to do some, um, uh, not data validation. What is it called? Conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, sure. Right? And, and nobody knows how to do conditional formatting, yep. right? But, <laughs> but, but can you set up a simple spreadsheet? I'll show you how to make it look a little bit awesomer. Yep. And that's their way of showing off what they know because they're going to open up sheets maybe and just put some numbers in if they can get that far. And then you're going to go in and help them get to that next level. And really, that's the job description. Sure. No, absolutely. And, you know, I'm just going to mention, and I like the four, you know, the four quadrant idea that you're talking about. So when they, you know, when anyone who's listening takes a look at this and, and checks out the four quadrants, you know, I remember using something where it's like, just place the marker on this graph, how you would assess your teaching style, right? Like, and that's another thing to see how would they assess themselves? And you put something like, do you consider your teaching style personalized? Do you consider it a one size fits all or experimental, whatever it is. But I like this idea because it really gets them thinking about how they teach and the tools they use and the varying things. So when the listeners take a look, I think they're going to, they're going to totally get what we're going after. You know, the other nice thing about this, and again, we talked about sometimes it's designed for you and for them. Um, this is something that's clearly designed for them, right? Like if you give out this free Google drawing that you can get from going over to ask the tech episode number 13 here, um, you know, this isn't a form. You're not going to get a spreadsheet. You kind of have to do some of the back end work to, to collaborate on the data. But sure. what you do get is a bunch of Google drawings in your Google Drive that when you're looking at thumbnail view, now you're seeing 15, 25 on a screen. And you can clearly look and see, okay, most people have Gmail over here. Most people have calendar sure. over here. Most people don't know what Google Drawings logo looks like. You can figure this stuff out as you go along. And, you know, it, it doesn't always have to be about data and spreadsheets. Sometimes it could just be about what's easier for the teacher to do. Sure. And I've used this Google Drawing spreadsheet a lot, both in sessions at, at Ed Camps, for instance, last week, but also in my own school district. And, and it's easy for people to pick out those things. Plus, then you also figure out, well, okay, why aren't they using that particular logo? Do they know what that logo is? And then maybe you can decide if that's a logo you want to use or not bring that ed tech company in. But so here's the next question. Um, when do you survey? Do we do we wait till the first week of school when there's so much commotion and say, guys, we're going to do a tech survey? Or do you just throw it into the your, you know, your PD classes? I think there's so many times, right? But I think it's just a matter of how much is too much. You know, I, I've always been a big proponent of, you know, if I'm going to do any big surveys and I really need to gather a lot of information uh, and data to take away, then I need to be doing something with that information. It's not just me quickly look at it and go, oh, okay, they get the concept. No, I need to be able to be creating something off with all that information. So to me, end of the year, 
you know, something that's like, for me, I would try to always knock it out at end of May or something. But the goal in that then is to give me time to personalize PD. So the whole idea of the end of the year survey needs to be something that's going to give you, okay, what type of workshops worked? What time frames worked? What do you want to learn about? And now I take that information and then I can do something with it. So, you know, I, I like you said, I think when you survey is a big probably one of the most important things to really think about when you're going into this is when I survey, because like you said, inundated with email and different things, are they really going to uh, look at it and, 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 or take part in your survey? So when we're looking at this and, and I want to bring this up because you just mentioned it, right? The importance of collecting data. Mm -hmm. Is this for you? Is this for the school district, right? If, for instance, are you going to take this data as a whole and go to the principal and say, here's what I've done, here's what I found, here's my plan, or are you going to go to your principal and say, I just worked with Jeff, he doesn't know anything, here's how I'm going to help him, right? Because there is that point in time where they're coming to you with their trust, they're coming to you with their, you know, uh, trust really is the only word that I can think of right now. Like you, they don't want you to go to this principal and say, Nick doesn't know how to share a Google doc. Right. And that's the, those are those questions you have to ask yourself in the beginning. You know, who is my target audience? What, what is my goal with this survey? Um, what is it that I really want to find out? Uh, you know, what way would be the best way to assess their skills or whatever it is, like you said, using a Google drawing, or do I need to get into something lengthier? Um, but then what am I going to do with that information, right? Like that needs to be part of that opening discussion because you're not and shouldn't, right? Where it's not to go to the administration and share the results. You're going to take it because you're going to personalize whatever the instruction is, whatever the workshop, whatever the PD modules that you're creating for them. Now, we mentioned this at the top of the show here. What do you do if nobody fills this out or if a small percentage? Do you just take those teachers and target them for your one-to-one -one lessons? Or do I say, Nick, thanks for your time. By the way, fill this out right now. How do you keep target with all that stuff and not be a nudge? But <laughs> you still have a job to do, which is Absolutely. collect the data on the school district and help move yourself forward. I think we keep moving, right? I, I I don't think you can get you know get inundated and get frustrated with with what's going on. I think you keep moving forward. And one of the things is is use use that as a spark, right? Like, okay, so those teachers who filled out my survey, let's see what they want to learn. Let me get them what it is. Let me put together this workshop, and then maybe they become that 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 fire that spark that now ignites some other teachers to jump aboard and see what they did you know promote the work that those teachers did from your workshop the things they create and use that to maybe highlight and spark to some other teachers you know as i'm going through here i'm thinking somebody out there probably has a better solution than we do right like we don't have sure. all the answers here and one of the reasons why we do this podcast is to build this community of tech coaches and we want to know what you guys are thinking out there if you guys have a great survey or maybe a google drawing or anything like that we would love to have you guys interact with us share with us uh, maybe even write a guest blog post on, on on the blog that's that's a good idea there nick but we would love to have you you know again you can reach out feedback at teachercast.net is our email address here or you can always find us on twitter at ask the tech coach um, one of the things that we're working on over the next few weeks is we are building an ed tech coach mastermind now what is a mastermind it is a group we might call it a pln but we are looking to design a community that is interactive and might have a little bit of you know support from the outside world and a little bit of support from the ed tech world we're looking to launch this thing somewhere in the beginning to middle of september just as school's going up so if you're interested in that please let us know i uh, we mentioned this on the show last week nick i got about 25 t uh, tech coaches that wrote me and said i want in how do i help you out so if you're interested in learning more about that please let us know and you know we're always looking for great um guests to be on this show as well Sh come on the show and showcase all of these things so nick the question is what happens next right we've done our survey we have the data we know that this teacher or these teachers need something what do we do with it you know, you got to take the time to really uh, analyze the results, right? Sit down and figure out how you're going to personalize, how you're going to design your professional development plan for the next year or whatever it is, how you're going to tweak your workshops. Um, 
you know, I always have a couple things that I go over. My things are sort of like, you know, I, I want to find out what times workshops work well for them. Um, things change, right? We're, we, we, it, we're always busy. Everyone's in the same boat. So how can I best meet your schedule in order to get you to a physical workshop or to take part in something online? Um, what do you need to get out of it? What do you want to do? Um, where should I focus my attention? You know, what's a group that maybe I'm missing? Who's a, you know, what department hasn't had some PD? Maybe there's some targeted PD. Um, and what formats work best? You know, should it be a one hour? Should it be some bite-sized kind of real quick, you know, 30 minute things, whatever it is. I think those are some of the questions that we need to, to be able to answer. Uh, and that's what I try to do. What about you, Jeff? What do you, what do you try to take away from, from from some of the data that you get um when i'm looking at these different data points it really is how am i going to be building for the future but also if nick says i don't know anything about google slides you know that's a good opportunity to write back and go like what are you doing or hey maybe i can show you some examples from other teachers to give you some ideas right most people i'll just take google slides because we did it last week for our for your ed camp right are you looking at Google Slides as a presentation tool or are you looking at it as something that you can use for ebooks and calendars and Jeopardy games and, 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 and animations and all of that other funky stuff, right? Are you looking at it at, you know, level one, level two, level three, right? And, and where are those things are? Because you might say, you know, Nick might come up and say, I've learned how to use Google Slides and I often use it. And then another tech coach comes up there and goes, oh, yeah. And then you just go, okay, somebody sure. has a couple better ideas. And it's never, I know more, I know less. It's, oh, that's a really cool idea. And how do we run with it? So I always like to show off ideas first, right? Nobody ever wants a tech coach to walk in and tell them what to do. Right. But I always say my, I know I have one job. I'm here to inspire, right? You're not here teaching the class. You're not here teaching anything else. You are here to inspire the teachers to say, help me do more. It's not, sure. It's not I better, like that. Right? It's more. Yeah. Right? More. And, 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 you know, people say, where do you get that from? That's the conducting philosophy. You're the only one on stage that doesn't make a sound. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, 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 you're the one that stands up, but no one's here to hear you. They're here to see the lesson or they're here to see, you know, they're here to hear Beethoven. They're here to see how, how effective the lesson is. And, you know, everything I learned on the, on the conducting podium, I bring into the classroom as a tech coach here. So it always is about that. One of the biggest things that we think of in, in conducting world, but also in tech coach world is that first five minutes, that first 10 minutes, right? Many tech coaches are going back. Well, every tech coach is going back to school now, but it's always that what do you say that first time out? Maybe you're a new tech coach and you're being introduced with a new program or maybe you're taking over somebody's program or maybe you've been doing it for a couple of years and you're kind of like, Hey, I'm here. Don't forget about me. I'm here. Go team. Right? So next week we're going to be talking about those tips and tricks for introducing yourself. We want to hear from you. What are your tips and tricks? We can bring those up on next week's show. You can find us over on Twitter at ask the tech coach and share your thoughts about all that stuff. We want to hear from you, Nick, before we wrap up, what is one tip we might be talking about next week when it comes to those first few moments in front of the staff? Yeah, I think, you know, it's something about making it personable, right? And making that connection, building those relationships with the staff. I always find that as just a big piece and, and uh, sparking interest. I think that's it, right? Like you said it before, and I always find that to be, man, what are my cool ideas for this year? How do I spark some interest? And how does that ignite something in them to, to want to really take part and see the fun in what I'm offering to them? So that's going to be our show next week. Of course, you can always go over to askthetechcoach.com. Don't forget our question of the week that you can join into our conversation. How do you assess the technology skills of your students and teachers? You can find us again on Twitter at askthetechcoach or this is askthetechcoach.com. And we are at episode number 13. We are more than welcome to go over to our blog post and leave a message in the comments. But before we have our sign off here, Nick, there is our tech coach tip of the week what is this week's tech coach tip of the week yeah you know it's just the idea that um you know if you can't get your teachers to trust uh you right away don't let that get you down and then you know there's always time to build those positive relationships to um get those teachers who will be sort of that spark that uh 
to ignite the other teachers and uh you know that are going to see the good that you're trying to do so not to let that get you down it takes time everybody right Absolutely. everybody wants to walk in there to that first job and maybe they've got two middle school buildings right and they want to figure out how to do this for everybody out there and they walk away and look th this is my story too right after one year you sit there and go oh i made friends with 15 teachers or exactly. i made friends with 30 teachers out of 500 right and you're like Oh, that's not good. But you, you got to realize this is a relationship. These teachers yep. may have been with each other for a long time or may have seen you as a teacher in that school district, but you're not quite there as their coach. And yep. now suddenly your job is to walk into the room and ignite their fires. It all changes, right? It all changes. So never, never, never make it personal, right? Like they have Absolutely. their job to do. Your job is to go and shake them up a little bit. Yep. I don't know if that was the right words, Nick, but you, you get what I'm saying yeah, out there. You're, you're, you're there to, to inspire them. Inspire. So we want to know where you guys are. Um, Nick, great show. Thank you so much for Thanks everything for today. Of course, you can find out more information here over at, over at you know, askthetechcoach.com. Leave us a voice message, guys. Teachercast.net slash voicemail. I'm getting a lot of those. Maybe next week uh, or the following week we'll, we'll do something. We're actually going to be planning a, uh, a questions show yeah, coming like up it. here um, late August, early September of questions that you guys have asked. We're just going to do a, some round fire. Maybe we can get one of you guys on the show as a third guest. So if you're interested in being a guest host on the show, we would love to have you guys. Um, on behalf of everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, this is Ask the Tech Coach. My name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Amaral. Reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.